Hello again, everybody. I'm Bryce Johnson. Welcome to the second edition of the Bassett Report. We have a lot of great things in store for you that I want you to know about. So let's get right to the great things happening at Bassett Elementary School. First, uh, we are going to talk about the GED program. We have a group of parents here at Bassett that we consider lifelong learners. They are just excited to continue their educational journey and we're excited to be a part of that process. And so we're actually having families come and work on their GED here at Bassett um, and complete those courses so they can one day graduate. So we're looking forward to seeing them complete that process and we're excited to be partnering with that program here at Bassett Elementary School. Next, the Honors Assembly uh, kicked off our first nine weeks award ceremony that looks at all the stellar stuff that our kids are doing. Some of that ranges from honor roll activities, um, attendance, and we look at, at behavior. Um, and so with all that criteria together, we had hundreds of kids receive awards for their first nine weeks award ceremony. And so we are thrilled to have them come and the families came and, and we're looking forward to the second nine weeks having many more kids come down that stage and be honored for their hard work they've completed during their nine weeks. Finally, we're going to look at Miss First Class. Um, she has uh, just a creative way of really looking at math concepts. Sometimes math can be a little difficult. I know it was for me. Uh, and so when you look at some of these skills, um, you have to be creative in how you approach uh, those concepts. And so she has a, a neat way I want you guys to take a look at where she takes some of her math uh, tables, multiplication tables, and they do a little rap video which is always fun. Um, I won't attempt to try that on camera, but you can take a look at how that process uh, is done with the kids, as well as she's gonna look at several math properties um, with some of the uh, students as they work um, individually um, on some of these skills and really master those, those challenging math concepts. So let's take a look. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Today, my third grade class will be learning about the commutative property of addition as well as the identity property of addition and subtraction. And my class will also be able to understand the relationships between addition and subtraction problems through the use of manipulatives. All right, so we're going to start our lesson first by going over some fact fluencies for multiplication. This is for the multiplication tables of six. I like salsa and chips, and I like six. Give me six. Hey, 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 Look, um, six times one is no trick. Cause six times one is six. Six times two doesn't ring a bell. Cause six times two is twelve. Six times three, I don't want to make me. Okay, six times three is eight. Six times four, that's a snore. Hey, 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 hey,
Jimmy Hey, 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 say what? Okay. So today we're going to do commutative property. We're going to talk about the relationships between addition and subtraction as well using commutative property. And we're also going to be talking about identity property of addition. Okay? First of all, let's talk about commutative property. And the best way for us to remember commutative property is use the COP. Sometimes when we talk about commutative, we're talking about the order that the numbers come in. Okay? So we can look at this and remember this as COP. COP. Commutative means back and forth. When we commute to school from home, we go back and forth between home and school. That's the same concept that we're gonna in, we're gonna talk about in math. So right now, what I have are some counters, two different color counters. Okay. So in the first group of counters, how many do I have? Four. four. I have four, don't I? Yes. And this group, I have how many? Two. Two. If I add both of those together, how much do I get? Twenty-four. Four. Six. Six. Six all together, right? I take yes. four, and I'm adding two more. Four, five, six. six. So my answer is six. In the commutative property, it talks about how two numbers can switch positions but give you the same answer. Now, this doesn't work with subtraction, but it works with addition. So, isn't this the same as yes. Yes. What did I do? You just switched them the other way. I flip-flopped them, didn't I? Yes. So rather than it being 4 plus 2, how could I write this equation now? 2 plus 4 is 6. 2 plus 4, and it's still 6, isn't it? Yes. It still gives me that same answer of 6, right? Yeah. So we can say that in this, these two equations, when we write them as commutative property, and you'll see this written like this on your test, that that would be an example of commutative property of addition, right? Yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys some markers, and you're going to use your dry erase markers to write an equation for the two different types of markers that you have, just as I have, okay? And then I want you to use the commutative property to switch the orders of your numbers and practice writing your equations for the commutative property. Does everybody yes. understand? Yes. Okay. So we're not going to fight over the different colors, okay? You guys are just going to grab some out of a bag, and you're going to come up with your own equations for the commutative property of addition. So you two are going to share. I don't understand it. We're going to take, you just grab some markers out, your counters. You take some, and you take some, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to separate the colors, right? And you're going to write an equation based on the different colors that you have, addition, okay? So you're going to count your markers here. How many do you have? Okay, so write number nine. How many do you have here? Okay, so if I add all of these together, how much do I get all together? Okay, so write your addition sign because you're adding these nine plus the four counters. Mm -mm. How do you write addition equation? Perfect. Now, I want you to do the same thing, except this time I want you to put the orange markers first. Okay, so how many do you have here? Four. Mm -hmm. So changing the order, did it change how much you had all together? No. no. So you can take these and you can grab more if you like out of the bag and practice writing. So when you write the commutative property of addition for this one, you would write 9 plus 4 is the same as 4 plus 9. Okay? So that's what you're doing. You're just going to use your, your counters just to come up with different equations to use for commutative property. And feel free to turn and talk to your neighbor about what you've done with your counters. How are you doing? Okay. Let's do it by talking. Okay. He's kind of looking.
Yeah. Um, we're going to add these together because we want to find the sum of everything, right? So how many do you, how many oranges do you have? Five. This, this is the because I find them together. If you understand commutative property of addition. Fantastic. All right. Go ahead and put your markers away for right now. Put them in front of you. Don't touch them. You don't have to worry about erasing anything yet because right now we're going to talk about the zero property of addition. Okay? Are you ready? Also, a zero property of addition. And this actually works for subtraction, too. So we've got the zero property or identity property of addition and subtraction. And what we can do is we can remember that by using the first letters of each of these words to spell zip. So in your notes, you might want to annotate that, zip which stands for zero or identity property, zip. So you can just write the word zip to help you remember what it was, what it is, okay? Zero identity property. Like I said, you can use it for addition and subtraction. And it works a little something like this. In the zero property or identity property of addition or subtraction, in your equation you will always find a a zero. A zero. For instance, what is 12 plus nothing? 12. It's still 12, isn't it? Yes. What if I have this number, 1,468 plus zero? What is my answer going to be? 1,468. Let me move this over a little bit for you. So in the zero property of addition, it states that no matter what number we add to zero, the answer will always be zero. that number. Yes. Okay? It works the same for subtraction. So if I take, you should have some examples already written down. So if I take for subtraction, how many counters do I have? Let me see if I can move this over for you. How many counters are there? Four. 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 Five. 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 If I have five counters and I took nothing away from those five counters, how many counters do five. I still have? Five. I still have the five. Okay? Sometimes you will see it flip-flopped. Sometimes you'll see zero plus five, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It does not work for subtraction when you commute, okay? So the only thing that we don't commute is subtraction because we can't take 12, just going back, minus five equals seven. We can't take seven, five, uh, we can't take 12 away from five. We can't flip-flop these and get the same answer. But in the zero property, it doesn't matter. If I have five and I take away nothing, I still get five, don't I? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I sure do. So, understand zero property, zip, works for addition and subtraction. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. So I'm going to write some equations on the board. And in your notebook, you're going to tell me, you're going to write the equations, and you're going to tell me what property it is, whether it's commutative property, cop, or zip. Okay? Cop or zip. Ready? Yes, and you. One, two, and three. So the first one is 15 plus 6 equals 6 plus 15. The second one is 7 plus 0 equals 7. And the next one is 8 plus 0 equals 0 plus 8. Let me throw in one more for you.
find a person that's standing up and share your answers with them. She said put C O P. The teacher told me on So let's take a look at number one. Fifteen plus six is the same as six plus fifteen. Camille. Clap. 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 I have, yes. of, I have a lot of Camille's yes. in here. Yes. Oh, it is. The first one is cop. We change the order of the numbers. It's cop. Oh my god, we're zoom out of here. I put I mean, I spell community wrong. That's okay. <laughs> Not community, it's commutative. Oh, okay. commutative. The next one was 7 plus 0 equals 7. Uh, Genesis. 7 plus 0 equals 7. Cop or zip? Zip. Zip. Why? Because it's the um, zero of Because of the zero, right? We added seven and zero together, we still got seven. That is the zip property, zero identity property. The third one, that shook some of us up. Judah, what's number three? Cop. It's cop. A yes. lot of you oh. went straight for the zero property because you saw the zeros. Oh. But keep in mind, what the eight and the zero did, it switched places. The orders change. So it is cop. And the last one, 15 minus 0 equals 15. Copper zip class. Zip. Zip. Yes. Good job. I got yes. that one right. Fantastic I work. This first one got the number right. Fantastic. Me too. How many of you got at least three of them right? Three or more right? I got more. I got more. I got more. more. Good. 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 I'm in all right, so what we're going to do, this concludes our lesson, so what we're going to do is we're going to do some additional practice with commutative property of addition and identity property of addition and subtraction, and then we're going to break down into small groups and do some games and centers, okay? Yay! Great job, Miss First Class. That was exciting and fun. Well, that's how learning should be. I know I was starting to try to rap a little with that video, and I'm sure the kids at home are just continuing to practice their multiplication tables and learn their math properties. Fantastic. This wraps up our uh, second edition of the Bassett Report. We hope you enjoyed some of the information as well as the sneak peek at some of the greatness taking place here at Bassett. We'll catch you on the next Bassett Report.